What is going on, everybody, and welcome to the greatest combat sports and culture show in the entire universe, the Fight Podcast. I'm your host, Serge Vicente, and this is episode 254 of the greatest combat sport and culture show in the entire universe, the Fight Podcast. And yo, it's the end of the year. It's yes, it the is. end of the year, everybody. Thank and, God. And, and, and for you know, shit. And for everybody who does not know this already, and if you're listening um, on on all podcasting platforms, thank you so much for listening. If you're watching us live today on Facebook, YouTube, or Twitch, thank you so much for joining us. But if you hear the other voices in the background, I you, at the end of the year, I had to bring in the ringers. I had to bring in my my guys. I had to call them in out the back and uh, in my relief pitchers. And guess what? We're going to have a fun show today, and uh, we're coming on to say no, none other than, who else? We got the guru, B-Cam, brother, what it do? Welcome to the show. What's good, what's good? Thank you for having me. I am um, a little bit salty today. I, uh, what took you an salty L. for? I took an L in my fantasy football championship. Hey, oh. uh, I know that's not something that you care about, but like, I played, Al- so I played Alvin Kamara, which was really, really difficult. If y'all don't okay. know, Alvin Kamara scored six touchdowns by himself which is pretty ridiculous to overcome in fantasy football but he scored six touchdowns by himself play buddy i played against him he was on the opposite team Uh, uh, so so it it made it it made it really difficult for me and then on top of that i played mike evans who i know for the football followers here he had a balled out 180 yards two touchdowns um but at the end of the day I put my team in a position to win. My team played amazing. Uh, I had crazy performances, but Miles Gaskin, Aaron Rodgers, and uh, Stefan Diggs balled out. But then what happened? I, I, pl- I had a bad defensive play. I played the yeah. uh, I played the Texans defense, and they scored negative ten points. Uh, probably the worst thing I've seen all year, and I've seen some <laughs> terrible things. So uh, I took an L in the fa- fantasy championship, broke my heart. But you know, shout out to my boy Sam. He took <laughs> the championship. Right. I'll be back next year. Well, but that's salute my salute to Sam. Salute to brother Sam <laughs> for getting that W. B. I, I I feel for you, man. I know how much weight this championship held on you. I know what what goes into this shit, brother. My heart goes out to you. I apologize, man. You know I feel for you the same way I felt for Jimmy Butler. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy. I feel for him. Granted, yeah. you weren't playing the Lakers, but it's all good. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> A nigga scores six touchdowns and feel like it. it. Nigga, you know what I'm saying? What? What? Look, we'll hold fast there, man. Without further ado, also, man, you hear my other brother in the in the room as well, Aldrick of one of my favorite favorite podcasts in the world. We have the Fight Dollar, Aldrick, brother. What it do? No much, man. I appreciate you guys having me on here. Just um, thank God the end of the year is here. Uh, it's been a crazy year, and uh, man, I've been doing watching. NBA games, seeing these people get blown out. I haven't seen like a close game at all this season, except maybe what last night. But well, I, I, we you know. did when we saw my fucking Bulls get beat by the trash ass Warriors. <laughs> hey, it could be worse. You could get dog fifty one points by my team, the Mavericks, <laughs> against the bum ass Clippers. You know, for all the Clippers fans point. out there, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> I went hear nothing about Clippers all season. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, the Knicks are two and two. We beat the Bucks. Hey. I think we're ready to win the championship. You fucking New York guys. Well, I tell you, y'all I think just ready to go all about, the way. You know what I don't understand about you, you Knicks fans? This is what don't make sense. You have a real team in New York. You have a real team in Brooklyn. Why don't you guys just? It's a it's a real organization. It got dude. Jay Z's fingerprints all over that shit. What are y'all doing? <laughs> You, you guys call yourself New Yorkers, but you're sitting here going with the corporate team, not the people's team. Ooh, you're out ooh, here with the corporate ooh. team. They kicked ooh. out Spike Lee, bro. They kicked out Charles Oakley, my mm-hmm. beloved Charles Oakley. Man, fuck mm-hmm. the Knicks. Ooh, oh, <laughs> even, even so, oh. even the beautiful movie that Disney Plus dropped this week went out there and took a shot at the Knicks. Why? Because they deserve it. They deserve it. <laughs> Ooh, his soul was beautiful. He come with nice it fire. Was. Today. Come with, come, come with nice fire today. <laughs> hey, bro. Hey, 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 Jordan, Jordan ain't healthy. Derrick Rose is long gone. You, you down here with us, bro? <laughs> take Man, a I'm seat a on the couch. Fan. Come take a seat on the couch, buddy. <laughs> 
Ah! Yeah! <laughs> so y'all can see that. What's that say? What's that he, say? He, he talked about that? New York niggas not yeah. repping for Brooklyn. He done, he done left the whole city. He done left the whole city. He went to a, a whole other part of the nation. Hey, look, man. Hey, 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 come out, come out. Did, did, did I not kick it off? Did I are not you? kick it off by saying <laughs> my bulls got waxed? Did I not kick it off by saying that? We, so I said we got beat not. by the gu- all, every, all day, every day. All day, every day. Oh, but but the, I also but said on this show. No, my Lakers have always been my team also. They're my second. Everybody <laughs> has a secondary team. Don't lie. Like everybody don't have that other team so that they grew up with and they loved. Huh? I'm a Brooklyn man. Well, then there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm happy man. with that. There you go. I ain't mad at that. <laughs> That's where we Audrey, at. Now, nah, nah, brother, Audrey, I don't, I, how you like the Mavs, I have no fucking clue. You live in, like, Pennsylvania. I have no clue how that works. <laughs> you know, um, you know, since I was younger, I was, uh, my mom, my mom was actually a huge Spurs fan. And, okay. Uh, okay. you know, and I, I grew mom up watching the Spurs. technical basketball. We see her, okay. Yeah, mom and then all I about look... the fundamentals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, fun fact, my mom actually knows Tim Duncan. Seriously, because he's from the sister island. I'm from St. Thomas, United States. He's from ah, there you go. See? He's from St. Croix. So, like, yeah, my mom and him, I, like, it know all each makes other. sense now. It all makes sense. This brother said, you know what? No, man, we that's that. That's a, that, that's like me. Everybody who's from Puerto Rico, I don't give a fuck what they do. JJ Barrera, <laughs> my nigga. Yes. <laughs> I stay with him. Carlos Arroyo, what? You know what I'm saying? I feel you. I feel you. We know, we know them all. We know them all. Mm. But yeah, gentlemen, man, I, um, I I'm loving it, man. Thank you both I, I so much for joining me on the show Knicks today. Slander. Yo, the Knicks slander themselves. I don't have to do you anything right. about it, okay? That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> That's but fair. still, you guys have a real team in New York. And you know what? I am not a Kyrie Irving fan, but the the, the Brooklyn looks good. Duh. And I'm always somebody that says anybody who tears uh, AC area and Achilles, you're not going to come back the same. I forget. KD's game isn't predicated on athleticism. He is just eight foot three and can shoot the lights out. Ain't shit you can do about that. He is going to still be K- uh, KD, which I love to watch. And uh, now, the loss of Karis LeVert, that's going to hurt them. Um, so was it was Karis LeVert? LeVert? I, I it, thought wasn't it was LeVert. It was no, the other one. Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie. That's going to hurt him because that's a, that's a big that – he's, he's a dog. I am a fan. I'm a fan of LeVert and Dinwiddie. So both of those guys. Uh, so I don't. Can they win it all? No, because you gotta go through the Lakers, baby. <laughs> that shit ain't gonna happen. Not like not like KD and been through LeBron before. Nigga, he had a fucking. It, 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 come on, you can't even say that. What a super oh. team! And LeBron came in there with the three of us. LeBron Fuck had his own here. super team. I mean, I now guess he that you he was hurt. He, has, he, he had his own. No, he had his own super team at the time. You talking? You talking about the? Okay, so we can't even go there. The year we're talking about, Buddy got hurt. And let's be honest, are we talking? Nigga, we got, got me arguing basketball. This is a fight show. Okay, we got a lot to get to, and I can't, <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot to get to. Uh, but I am not taking LeBron slander on my show. Okay, <laughs> we won't be doing that here. <laughs> I was giving KD love and props. I wasn't pulling <laughs> my nigga down. All right, we ain't going for that. <laughs> Especially, it's the, die, the, the, the the goat's birthday yesterday. We ain't going for that. Yes, we live. We out here. Love everybody for joining us uh, on the show. I know we're talking about basketball stuff. Everybody join us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Thank you so much for joining us on the greatest combat sports and culture show in the entire universe, The Fight Podcast. So, gentlemen, um, we have, obviously, we have Aldrich from The Fight Dialogue on the show as well as the guru, B. Cam. Gentlemen, it has been a crazy, crazy year in fight sports. Um, And I want us to recap the year and just have – because I do think – um. We had some big wins in, in all of combat sports. Boxing had its moments. MMA absolutely had its moments. Um, but this year started off with a bang with some incredible, incredible fights, some kind of lackluster fights, and then the fucking world shut down. We didn't know when we were going to see another fight at all. Um, so... When the pandemic and everything happened, I know we've all had shows. We've all talked about it. Um, what was your guys? I'm gonna start with Brandon. Brandon, how do you feel the state of boxing has been? How do you feel boxing has really did its thing this upcoming year? How do you feel about? Well, how would you grade boxing? 
I would grade boxing. I would give it a solid B, B plus. That's because we're not the UFC. And I think UFC deserves an A plus for the way they've been able to push through the pandemic. However, boxing did its thing, give, given the cards it had. Um, with the way boxing is built and the multiple sides of the street, boxing had to relaunch multiple times. So first came back top rank, then the zone, then PBC and some of these other guys. But I mean, I think altogether, some good fights, some significant fights were made. You had the Charlo doubleheader pay-per-view. You had Tank taking on, um, yeah, yeah. Tank, Tank, taking along Leo Santa Cruz. You had Canelo finishing the year strong. You had Anthony Joshua getting back in, back in the ring. I'm sure I'm forgetting it's a, a ton of guys here, but they were. You, you, you still had uh, Tiafima Lopez taking on yeah. Lomachenko. Yeah. So significant fights were made. Obviously, there were, there were months, and really, we spent a lot of the summer waiting for some significant fights to come back. But I think the Charlo brothers kicked off some of the more significant fighters getting back into the ring. And for Q4, boxing did an awesome job. So awesome given job. that awesome we were job. pretty limited to essentially one quarter at the beginning at the beginning of the year, one quarter at the end of the year, boxing did all right. Not an okay. A-plus year, but we got what we needed, a B. Okay, um, Aldrich, I'm going to ask you the same thing, but in terms of MMA. How would you grade, not, and not just the UFC, because I think a lot of people have a misconception that the UFC is all of MMA, and it's not. Um, how mm -hmm. do you grade not just the UFC, all of MMA? Um, I have to give MMA the A-plus, like uh, B. Kim said, because, um, you know, the UFC was the forefront. They were the first ones to establish, like, in a way, to return of sports. And they went about a protocol, especially when everybody was against them. And it pretty much set the foundation for organizations to start back up, like Bellator. Um, they did their bubble, like in Connecticut, the Mohegan Sun. One championship right, started. Right. There's back up as well, too. And then we just had the rising card today. So um, it, it pretty it's much set the foundation. Too, for those who didn't see it. <laughs> yeah, it really was. Um, I had to check the highlights out. But, um, yeah, they set the foundation for a lot of the, um, the organizations to set back up as far as MMA-wise. Um, so I had to give them an A+. Plus and, uh, you know. It was a great year for MMA. Well, I love that. Uh, so, gentlemen, this is how I feel about both of them, okay? And, uh, and I'm going to start with MMA. Uh, in terms of MMA, I look at it like this. I think M UFC had an A-plus year. Um, Dana White, despite his bullshit, oh, bitch-ass video that he just fucking dropped, what kind of whole shit was that? But he just dropped that bullshit, you know, um, political hit job he did on the media video. Um, aside from that, he had an amazing year. OK, um, they did what they were supposed to do. They were able to get out there and, and really put together not just uh, great fights, but the fights that we all wanted to see. So in terms of the UFC, I give the UFC an A plus. But in, in terms of all MMA, dog, the PFL didn't even have a season this year. You know what I'm saying? There was no PFL this year. Bellator did a terrible fucking job. Let's just keep it a bean. Bellator was god awful now is it because we don't know what the fuck is going on with them and we don't know what's happening with uh with cbs now it seems like there was cbs and not the zone anymore maybe yeah. it's some of that there was a little bit of, of confusion they have had a great end of the year in terms of a lot of the pickups but in terms of the the product that i saw in 2020 it was ass it was absolute ass okay so i have to say this mma as a whole i give a b a a b I'm going to give him a solid fucking B, okay? Boxing. Um, I, I give boxing a C minus, straight Ooh. up. I give boxing a C minus. Um, terrible, terrible fucking job. They, they, the production value of those shows looked like a 12-year-old kid fucking did it. Those were awful. The majority of the, the production value sucked. The commentary sucked. The judging sucked. The, the cards sucked. Aside from some of these key main events and some of the big events, and we had some great fights. I don't want to take anything away from the great fights that we did have, yeah. but these motherfuckers in PBC, whatever it was, they 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 tried it so many bus drivers and Uber drivers out there for us to watch compete. It was a shame. All right, boxing did not do well this year. They had a great Q4, but who can who, so what? You 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 finished good. That's like you know. You have a solid minute with your chick. She ain't gonna be happy about that shit. I gave her one good minute. That's all I fucking got. <laughs> fuck out of here, nigga. She don't give a fuck about that. You she wants to the she wants to show. You know what I'm saying? That that's what I'm saying. So I I look, the C minus for boxing, C to all of you to MMA. That that's that that's how I looked at it. Okay. Um now we had a lot of different things 
in terms of craziness. Gentlemen, for both of you, and, and Aldrich, I'm going to start with you. For all the combat sports this year, how do you feel that we handled this year as a combat sports community? And Brandon, I'm going to ask you the same question as well. Uh, as, far as, a, as a combat sports community, I feel like they handled it very well compared to these other organizations because they had it as far as with the testing, they had it a lot more structured. They took the necessary protocols with the quarantine, uh, the consistent testing, uh, make sure they maintain a distance and uh, make sure everyone's safety, not just the fighters, but also people within the production, also the corners as well, too. So I feel combat sports handled this whole entire year alone uh, with this very well not, compared to other not, organizations. Not just, and not just, not just in terms of the X's and O's on the field. And this is for both of you guys. It's not just the X's and O's. Socially, everything. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. How did the combat sports handle this year? 2020 was a motherfucker. And I think a lot of people don't want to sit there and admit it. Dude, we had a civil rights movement. We had a global fucking pandemic. And guess what? Everyone's like, yo, 2020 is over. Oh, shit. <laughs> Nigga, 2021 is going to be ass. I'm just letting y'all know right now. Y'all think it's only going to get worse before it gets better. Okay? I hate to be... Y'all know me. I'm, I'm the positive guy. I smoke weed. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm chilling. But I'm going to keep it a bean with y'all at the same time. All right? Um, we have a, a long way to go. So, gentlemen, every aspect of it, how have combat sports handled this year? I think we did what we could. I think things were very limited, especially in with, within boxing, which I could speak a little bit more to with yeah, the, uh, the live gate, the amount of people that show up to your event being a huge part of the uh, of the fighter pay. So we weren't able to do that for a large part of the year until until Q4. You started seeing a few more fights in the Texas area where they were actually able to fill up the arenas at like 10 to 20 percent, something crazy like that. And you could even say that might have been slightly irresponsible. But they're trying to do what we can. All I know is that we're pushing forward in the best way possible. You keep the fighters safe. You quarantine them a week or two before the fights. You quarantine their entire camps. And if fighters te test positive, and this is what I don't like as much, because even if it's a false positive, the fight will get canceled. That's something I wish they could do a better job of. But they've done what they could, and they have pushed forward in a time where it's hard to put fighters to work. We've seen a bunch of fighters on, on TV. Great. They're able to work. They're getting paid. But what about the fighters that we have not seen? There are tons of fighters right now that are not working. They're not boxing. They're not fighting. They're not getting paychecks. A lot of them probably don't have the money to, to train. They don't have the resources to train because they're not A or B list fighters. So we have done what we can and we've pushed forward. And even in some cases, bus drivers have to get, get marched out there. But you know what? They need a job as well. They need to get paid as well. And so that. Com That's combat real. sports, That's boxing, MMA alike, they have done what they've had to do and they have pushed forward like a lot of other industries. I think the the world, we, we, we're in a new place that we've never been in and we've had to adjust. And I think combat sports, as has the NBA, as has the N NFL and the major sports across the world, they've adjusted and we pushed forward. I love it. I love what you guys are saying. I think um, you, you, you both make very, very valid points. Um, when, when you really look at it, though, uh, and man, I feel like I'm a Debbie Downer this fucking year, bro. It, <laughs> no, it, it, I mean, it, call, it, call it, it like sucks. it is. You know what I'm saying? But it, it's like when we think about it, okay, how have the, the combat sports communities handled this year? Man, ass, nigga. Dog, I don't know about you guys, but I am somebody who is very vocal. And I think every both of all of us on here, we're... We're we're we we're not not only supporters of BLM. We're black men. You know what I'm saying? Like it it is what it is. I mean, nigga, different shades of black men at that. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, and looking at how black men specifically have been vilified in this country, and looking at how the MMA media space and how the fandom. Dog, some little wild shit some of these people have said to me even online. You know what I'm saying? It's just looking at how like, just with, with a time where compassion should be really preached. You got Dana White going out there and speaking in the Republican National Convention. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, how have we handled it socially? Dog, the, UFC, the, the, the people who have handled that whole situation the best this year, who handled, who won 2020? The NBA. The NBA won 2020. 
Okay, there is no if, ands, or buts about it. Like, UFC did your fucking thing and you gave us entertainment, and they are the leaders, straight up. The leaders of the new school. They the motherfuckers that got this shit going. Fam, if it wasn't for the UFC, I would not have a job this year. So I am grateful for what these motherfuckers have done. I am. But at the same token, they make it seem like Black Lives Matter isn't a real fucking thing. You got Dana White over here acting like, you know what I'm saying? Like, these are things that the community, none of boxing barely didn't address that shit. MMA didn't address that shit. And we just act like, oh, this is a whatever. We don't want to know, man. This is real. This is in our fucking faces. And if you have some of these asshats in terms of the organizations and these fighters, actually, get up, dude, be willing to lose some shit. Stand up. Say some shit about somebody. Say that, dude, this shit, I'm drawing a line in the stand. This fucking thing is wrong. We got people, for instance, like fucking Big Pretty, who fights for the PFL, who got cut from the UFC, who lost one fight to Curtis fucking Blades. That's it. Everybody loses to Curtis Blades if your name ain't Francis Ngannou. That's the only person. He beat everybody. Whoop Marks Hunt's ass. He's whooping everybody's ass. They cut him. Why? Because he speaks out against for black people. This shit is fucking nuts. And nobody talks about it, bro. Nobody talks about it. You got Mike Perry. Just call him motherfuckers, nigga. You know what I'm saying? You got all this wild shit. You got dumb fuck. Um, what's it? What, what's white boy's name? Um, I don't Kobe. Know, like, uh, Kobe dumb fuck Covington. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga. His ass. You got him talking all this fuck shit. You know what I'm saying? Like. It's it's really fuck Jorge Masvidal. Fuck you too, nigga. I see you. You are here talking all this fuck shit. This is crazy. It is crazy seeing what these people are doing and and, and spreading false narratives and shit. So in turn, I'm gonna be honest with you. The combat sports community, big fail, my nigga. Like, dude, this it was not a good look this year. It wasn't. We looked like ass in terms of a community. I'll, I'll say this. When boxing first came back, that was really at the height of a lot of the protests that were going on. And it wasn't lost upon the boxing community. And Matty a lot Matt, of what it do a lot, a lot of a lot of post fight interviews, most notably Shakur Stevenson, who was part of that first that first top yes. ranked card back. They did make sure that they com they commented on BLM and what was going on in the country. Show the as, as protests and, and things of that sort die down, so did so the black ones. So did, They're the ones that we well, would expect. So, so, did the, so, so did the narrative about it. However, Showtime, which is a huge player in the boxing community, they just released their uh, recap, their year end recap, which show okay. they do it every single year. Okay. And in their year end re re recap show, they did make sure they they did acknowledge what was going on in the <laughs> nation. I mean. Showtime is a notoriously democratic network. So and so the UFC is notoriously and Republican. PBC is the notoriously black organization. Yeah, and they made sure that they made sure they mentioned it because of Yeah. Oh, his mic got muted. Your mic your mic got muted, brother. <laughs> Look, look at Brandon. Got so excited, he cut his own mic off. <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. He's back. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not all the way back. I think I'm on the wrong mic. Whatever right. you got to do, my brother. No. Um, Aldrick, brother, do you have any uh, insight on here? I hear you, bro. Can you, Brandon, are you back? Can you hear yeah, me? I'm back. I'm good. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, oh. I'm sorry. Continue, bro. No, yeah, no, so what no, I was no. saying, they made they made sure that they men mentioned it. And Showtime is a notoriously democratic network. They have tons of yes. democratic propaganda. You can, you could call it that they that they air all the time. So they made sure they addressed it in their in their year end wrap up. So I mean, on the boxing side, the way things are built, it's a little bit different. And I do think they did a better job acknowledging it. However, I think the commentators. Could have done a better a better job much better you can't, job. You can't look to, the, to these fighters who make a living getting hit in the head to be eloquent in speaking about what's going on in america that is an important message and you do want it pushed as much as possible especially on things like pbc right right you do you do um aldrich bro how do you feel and the mma community has handled social justice issues and we'll move on to the fun shit. but dude this was such a big part of this year i'd be remiss if i didn't acknowledge it uh, as far as MMA community, um, hey, Rook, I have to agree to cut with you off. And I'm sorry to cut mm -hmm. you off. And nobody else is. Have you guys noticed all the year? I mean, it has not been addressed, barely, if anything. So I'm mm -hmm. sorry. Continue. I just wanted to let that be known. So continue. No, you're good. You're, you're good. Uh, as far as MMA community addressing it, they didn't do a good job with it. I'm gonna say it wholeheartedly didn't. I feel like it had done uh, could have been done better. Um uh, some some of the athletes did speak out, like you know, um Aljo May Sterling. I think uh Cormier spoke out about it too. Angela I can't, Hill. Angela Hill, yeah, all that stuff. Uh, 
yeah, so as far as the whole, as far as addressing the situation, they talked about it, but they really didn't really full heartedly address it. You know, I feel like it had done better. Um, it, it's, I don't know how to put my it, finger it's, on it's this a, one. It's a, but yeah. I could understand why for some athletes, there is a a line that some people don't feel as if they, they should toe, Okay. There's mm-hmm. those people that feel as if they need to stand in the middle. And that's where, unfortunately, so that's where the majority of our country is. Look, I ain't trying to cause no waves. I'm, I'm, fuck, I'm Sweden. Like, leave me the fuck alone. You know what I'm saying? That's how <laughs> most people are. I get it. I do. Um, I just wish there were more people that, again, the NBA put their asses on the line. They said, you know what, man? This is who is in our place. We This is who we represent. And this is what we want to go out there and put to, to put forward to the world. I think they did an amazing job of that. I'm just saying that the community around it, the media, um, I don't think everyone did a great job of handling this year. But in terms of obviously the product on the fucking field, nigga, what? We killed it in MMA. Oh, my God. So we'll talk about that. So let's go ahead and move on uh, to some fun <laughs> shit. Uh, Aldrich, let's start with you, my brother. MMA Mm -hmm. had some breakout fucking performers this year. We had a litany of people. And and, and again, we had superstars making performances. We had new guys. But there were some people that really came out of nowhere. Aldrich, brother, I am going to start with you. Who is MMA's breakout fighter of the year? I'm going to go with my boy Kevin Holland. Like. You can't go anywhere else. I mean, most people could say Chimaev. I mean, of course, but Kevin Holland did a lot more, you know, fighting five times within seven months. Um, you know, know, he's he's a definition of I could talk a big game, but I could back it up as well, too. And he definitely call did my that, man especially Big Mouth for big a reason. Mouth. <laughs> big you know, mouth. knocking out <laughs> knocking out Jacare Souza. And then recently tried to uh, replace from his knees. Well, I say from his back, but, you know. Um, then he tried to fill in for Chimaev against Leon Edwards, and he was like, "He's on." He, I saw him on Twitter. He was like, "Hey," he even told Brett Okamoto, "Listen, man, you gonna get hurt ourselves." He said, "I heard Leon need a fight. Put me in. I still got to fight Brunson in March, but it's still early." I was like, "You know what?" Hey, give last Kevin time Holland. I saw that, it was on the Fight Podcast IG page. If you guys are subscribed, you go ahead and need to go ahead and do so now. So go ahead and check out <laughs> at the Fight Podcast because that news was definitely on the page. Um, yo, <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, it's really funny that you say Kevin Holland, okay? And and I'm glad you did say Kevin Holland because here's the thing. Everyone wants to say, and, and Brandon, I want to get your thoughts about this also. The the people would like her talking there, they're talking about Hazmat. Kazmash Maev, everyone's talking about how badass he is. That is the fucking guy. Everything you look at, all the main places, they say it's Kazmash Maev. I'm going to be honest with you. I'd say, I say it's also it's uh, Kevin Holland. The reason I say is this. He beat somebody who is in the top six, a legend, somebody that matters. Kazmat has not beaten anybody in the top 15. Brandon, do you have any? what are your thoughts on this? Again, being the person that's casually looking into the MMA space. I told you, I think of the last episode, how I felt about Kevin Holland. I looked at what, and I hadn't seen all the fights. I've probably seen maybe three of his fights this year. I believe you mentioned he fought five times. Just looking at what he's done. Yo, I've how seen crazy all is that? Brilliant. You said, I just, I only saw three of his fights this year. For anybody else, that's, that's a full year. Nuts. That's a full <laughs> year and some. It, it, impressive, impressive knock, knockouts, promotes himself well, is a very exciting fighter. You know, and, and I was speaking to Matt yesterday. He posed a question to me, and I will pose that question to you now. If Hazmat yes. didn't have, oh, I'm sorry, not Hazmat, I'm sorry. If Kevin Holland yes. was a white boy, if he didn't have yes. a beard, if he wasn't Pink a black top. guy, yes. what, where would he be in the MMA? Because would he be on Hazmat's level? Because everybody, all they want to talk about is Hazmat. He's getting a huge push. Why is that not Kevin Holland? If Kevin Holland was a white boy, Kevin Holland would be the biggest name in MMA. It's not even a question. It's not even a fucking question. If he had the Russian Abraham Lincoln beard, or (laughs) if his ass was out there on some straight, you know, Kobe Covington, he'd be the biggest name in the sport. Um, He has it all. He's come off the Damon White Tuesday Night Contender Series. 
he, which is essentially the newest version of Tough. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. A lot of great talent is coming out of there. He's going out there to put on a show. He's fighting consistently. I mean, five fights in seven months is absurd. He And he tried to fight next week. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is out here trying to get after it. Those are the guys that the organization lo- lo- likes. And think about it. He's popular now. But if he was one of them, he'd be Conor McGregor love. The dude would be a rock star right now. They'd have him on fucking Wheaties boxes. Kevin uh, Holland. If you have a question that... about that, yeah, let me know. If I'm wrong. <laughs> no, I totally, I, I totally agree with you, man. Um, I, I, and this, of course, this is not any way, shape, or form. People out there is like, it's just a whole race car thing. But it's true. A lot of, if you see in the MMA, a lot of the African-American people don't really get a lot of push. So Kevin Holland, of course, has to do the big name. Kevin Holland, you know, Kevin Holland reminds me of that one person in the hood we all know that talk a lot of shit. Yeah, always starting scrap. drama. <laughs> and he, he can, can actually, actually scrap. scrap. Yes, <laughs> and we he, all know and that he guy. Br- <laughs> and he brought that to the UFC. He's backing it up. He's getting the proper push. Yo, like all the Adesanya. <laughs> Adesanya is casually walking, watching the fights, sitting on the sideline, just chilling. Like, man, I'm trying to watch Anderson Silva's last fight. And then mm-hmm. out of nowhere, this dude's like, I'd fight his ass too. And Adesanya's like, damn, bro, <laughs> like I was cheering you on. Like, kind of shit <laughs> Now, Adesanya he wants to smoke. Would- I would eat, take his fucking lunch money. That wouldn't even be a fight. He would smoke Kevin Holland, and I love Kevin Holland. I feel like a lot of people at the end of the year for the USC will be talking about the uh, Buckley knockout, the spinning back heel. That was him. Yes. Well, mm-hmm. right, wait, hold on, hold on. We 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 can't discuss that yet. We, we, well, we no, get to I, knockouts, I was, but I, I was just I was saying people don't even realize Holland knocked him out this year. Like that's, that's that's a earlier fact. this year, that's a fact. Yeah, um, and it's funny that you say that because, uh, and we'll talk about it in a moment. But we're talking about knockouts of the year. Uh, our boy Mystic uh, from Mystic Black Show. He actually was. Ta- I was talking to him a couple days ago, and he gave, um, he gave that knockout. He gave uh, Kevin Holland's knockout of Jacques the knockout of the year because of the knockout that he knocked out Buckley earlier in the year. And I'm like. You can't do that. You can't say, well, he knocked you out, so that knockout is better now. Like, nigga, no, that shit don't work that way. But, <laughs> it, but I hear you. So, yes, he's a m- bad motherfucker, man. That is the breakout performer this year in MMA. B, boxing. Who is the breakout fighter of the year? Uh, you know I'm indecisive. This type of stuff oh. is really hard. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to go with the obvious answer, but I do have an honorable mention. I think the obvious answer for most people for the boxing breakout performer of the year for 2020 is going to be Edgar Berlanga. Um, I think Sergio would probably agree with me. No one's made more of a no. No one's made a bigger ascent than Edgar Berlanga. Nope, he only nope. he only Jake three. Paul, breakout boxer of the year. <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, I mean, he, he up there no with key. the knockout. Of, he up no there key. with the knockout of the year. He's he not far off. Man. So, and and I, and I and I looked at a lot of different lists. Jake Paul was not lost upon people. Niggas had him up there for <laughs> oh, knockout man. of the year. But however, I, he fought three times this year. Built upon his legend, he's currently sixteen and zero with sixteen first round knockouts. So all of these fights, he, we didn't even get to see three minutes of him in, in action. He fought a total of less than nine minutes this year. However, he made a huge splash. Top Rank is doing an amazing job of promoting him. And we amazing all know job. Edgar Belonga's name. He's calling out the big guys in the sport. He's still a ways off from some of those fights, but we know his name. We've seen his work, and we will not miss him the next time he gets in the ring. There's another top ranked fighter from Long Island, my hometown. And not a lot of people are going to give him love for breakout performer of the year, but I'm going to give my guy some love. Joe Smith Jr. He deserves it, man. In two fights this year against Jesse Hart and uh, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, he against just Jesse Hart and a leader Alvarez. And he knocks out he knocks out or he he won just uh, decision. Jesse Hart beat the shit out of him for the entire fight. And then on top of that, he goes with the knockout of the year candidate candidate against a leader Alvarez. Dude, and the, 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 that's the only boxer in my opinion, that fought two high-level significant fights this year and won both of them. I I, I don't see any way now, around considering him for breakout form of the year. 
Yeah, can you call him a breakout performer of the year, judging the it's, fact that he already had a belt in the past? Like he he he's, he's been on the public guy. I mean, I, I I agree with you. I think more than anything else, Edgar Berlanga. I think head and shoulders is a way. You, I, I mean, I think Joe Smith is a, is the the most improved. If they had that, you know what I'm saying. If, if that's a category, you gotta give it to Joe Smith. Or what's Buddy's name? Um, got his ass whooped in the UFC, but then he went to boxing and now he's fucking everybody up in boxing. Uh, I know you're talking about uh, oh, man. white oh, boy, top top white rank. He just, he just lost, actually. Yeah, that's why. He, that's why you can't give him fighter of the year because he just that's lost. Why, if he won, he's boxer's fighter of the year. I don't give a damn. He's going. He ran through. He okay. He's he's in the conversation, but you can't Here, give him fighter of the year. I get here's it. why I give it to Joe, Joe Smith Jr. Ever since he knocked out Bernard Hopkins, he's been on everybody's radar. But he's sort of he been meander, meandering around as this fighter that has power, but he doesn't necessarily have the skill. So he beats Bernard Hopkins, then he takes a step back and loses to Sullivan Pereira. Then he wins a fight and then loses to another champ in that division um, in Dimitri Bivol, a a well-established fighter in in his own right. So to win two top-level fights this year, both of which he came in as the underdog, to me, that's super super impressive. I saw new skills in his game, and I feel finally, you know, back in 2016, whenever that was, since he knocked out Bernard Hopkins, he's finally established himself as a staple, yeah. as a force at the 175 pound light heavyweight division. So, and he's from Long Island. Fuck that. You know, I got to represent for the crib. <laughs> Go ahead and rep your crib, bro. No, I ain't mad no, at that no, shit. Do, do that, that shit. <laughs> um, um, look, but check this out. I agree with you guys. I think uh, Edgar Berlanga um, is someone who is, is I think he he's not just a knockout puncher for those who might think he is. That boy has skills. Uh, he has skills. I mean, amazing footwork. Not only does he have amazing footwork, he, I mean, the angles that he cuts, this this dude is legitimate. And um, and he's somebody that I would love to see fight Canelo in the future. I would love to see that fight in two years. I would love to see him fight some of the best uh, of the best. You know what I'm saying? So that that's a fight, and that's a fighter that I really love. I mean, I love, obviously, a New York guy. I love New York boxers. And I obviously love that Puerto Rico. We got another one. You know what I'm saying? He he seems like the next guy up, especially with, you know, Felix Verdejo getting knocked out and some other shit like that. You know, we have the, oh, it was bad. You know, so it seems like Puerto Rico, we got one. <laughs> New York, we got one. It is what it is. All right. Yeah, uh, yeah, let's yeah. move right along, gentlemen. No, no we got to move. Sorry, we got to move yeah, let's along. Go, let's, go, let's go. Let's go. Um, let's talk about this for both. We're all going to start with you, MMA. Then we're going to go ahead and transition. And B, I want you to chime in with this one as well. Gentlemen, what is the f- Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about fighter of the year. Okay, oh. let's go here first. Let's go fighter of the year. We're going to start off with MMA, and then we're going to transition to boxing, okay? So um, MMA, there's been, I think, a people, there's a couple of usual suspects that people always talk about champions, um, but you have the guys like the Kevin Hollins of the world that have five wins in the year. You know what I'm saying? You have these type of individuals going out there. So, bro, I'm asking you, do you believe it is the champions once again, or is it somebody out of left field like a Kevin Holland who gets your fight of the year? <laughs> Uh, it's been it's it's a tight knit one because Ooh. obviously it's Kevin Holland who's not a champion made a name for himself this year, especially after his recent win. And then you had Davidson Figueroa, who's fought in all title fights this year and put on a great performance. It had an amazing fight, was considered ca- fight of the year. Well, one of the candidates. It's it's, an, it's, it's top uh, top five for sure. Top five for sure. Top, d- very. Uh, it was a tight one. Uh, after reassessing and everything is going through, uh, I'm going to have to lean towards more Kevin Holland. Oh, just, just cause off oh, his, pro- oh, just cause off of his production, what he has done, he stepped up to the plate every time it has come. Even when he was booked for a fight, and his phones fell out. He was like, you know what? Send me the next man up. It is what it is. I like so, it. I like it. You know, like you said, usually the champion, but this year for me it is not. It's a non-champion. I have to go with Kevin Holland. In a sport, so check this out. Be undervalued. I love that we're gonna give him his due today. I love it. I love it. I think it's dope. And uh, with all that being said, fuck no, he is not <laughs> crazy, <laughs> crazy shit. We cannot get you crazy, dude. The reason this is the reason why you can't have somebody like Kevin Holland be fight of the year. You can't name three of the guys that he beat. Three of the guys that he beat, he but again, bus drivers, 
Dudes we ain't never heard of. You get mad love and mad respect for Jack Ray. You get mad love and mad respect for doing what you're doing. But, the Figueiredo, you have somebody that single-handedly saved a whole weight class. Come on, guys. We're staying in the UFC. One man, by him damn lonesome, saved a weight class. One man goes out there, and here we forget. He goes out there. For a championship fight, misses weight, destroys Joseph Benavidez, a legend in the game. Comes back a couple weeks later, says, I'm going to do it better. Destroys his ass again, right? Then, so he wins the belt. He defends the belt. Has to go to the hospital the night before the rematch three weeks later. And then, if it wasn't for the bullshit point deduction, he would have won that fight too. Instead of getting a draw. Dude, it makes a difference. It makes a legitimate difference. His level of competition matters. And I think a lot of people don't put that into account. Level of competition legitimately matters. And that is why I cannot have my breakout performer of the year for sure. Like he's my, that, Kevin is my guy. Fighter of the year? No, man. We're going with 125 pound monster in Davidson Figueiredo. Rah! That's what I'm going I respect with. it. I respect it, man. I respect it. You know, we got to do what we got to do, man. But let's check this. <laughs> um, B, any questions or any concern, any comments on, on MMA? Do you have any thoughts about this one? Nah. I All right, don't. well, let's transition. <laughs> boxing. So boxing was interesting because people weren't able to get those two and three fights that they're accustomed to getting in this year because of the pandemic. So a lot of people up for this award only fought one time. Bro, who I know you is hate that boxing's... Too. I hate it. I know. I, hate I know it so you hate much. it. But I mean, we I have do. to. We have to choose from what we're giving. Exactly. And so here's my right, thought. The floor is yours. Here's my thoughts on the matter. We'll, we'll go with the the metaphor that Sergio used earlier today. You know, your girl don't want don't want the baby strokes. Size size matters. She wants the big strokes. She wants the big events. The magnitude of the event matters. The, you know, you can come come up and have these smaller performances and knock out these smaller guys for non title fights. That's cool. But fight Deontay Wilder, fight Tiafima Lopez. That's that's how you talk about. Uh, that's how you talk about. Um, thank you very much. When yeah, that that distracted me, got me off my game. I but thank you. you. <laughs> 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 but thank you. Um, yeah, those events matter. Those are the events that people talk about. And for that reason, I struggled between the two guys. I struggled between Tyson Fury and Tiafima Lopez. But I'm going to lean to the young gun, one of the futures of our sport in boxing, Tiafima Lopez. The guy talks a good game. The guy walks a good game. He believes in himself. And I, I struggle with this a, a lot because it wasn't as dominant a, a performance as it was Tyson Fury. But he was a, he, he was way more of an underdog. He's, you know, depending on the day, maybe he's undisputed, maybe he's not. But for all intents and purposes, that was sort of an undisputed type of fight in boxing. So the magnitude of the event, he takes down the pound for pound king. While Tyson Fury had a very Im impressive win, it was a rematch. I think he knew what he had there. He knew that, hey, I, I, wasn't like, all, I, like that. I, I wasn't all the way back yet. But if, once I come all the way back, I can take this guy in Deontay Wilder. So the risk, it wasn't as much there for him. Whereas that was a huge risk for Tiafima, Tiafima Lopez as a young fighter. He took the risk. He got the reward. My fighter of the year, 2020, Tiafima Lopez. I like it. I, look, man, I, I, I'm a huge Tiafima Lopez fan. I think Tiafima is a bad motherfucker, and I think he's going to be here for years to come. Um, he might be the best of that young crop. We don't know yet. We don't know, but he might be. You know what I'm saying? He's that. He's one of those guys that, uh, like, he pops off the screen, right? Crazy explosive, crazy skill set. Um, you're not my fighter of the year. No. Hell no. Uh that fight was too close for you to be fighter of the year. Yeah. You know, it, it's one of those things that he didn't he didn't blow me away. The only reason he did great in the first couple of rounds is that cuz Lomachenko didn't throw punches. Let's let's keep it a bean. He he's talking right now like he just went out there and outclassed Lomachenko. He didn't. And when Lomachenko started actually fighting, he almost got him the fuck out of there. So, no one wants to admit that. But it's the, it's the reality. Lomachenko was whooping his ass, and this is a guy whose two weight class is smaller. So no, fuck no. And and he's talking all this nonsense, like you know he's like this man or something. Now you t relax, 
relax, homie. Because let's re- keep it a bean. Ryan Garcia might fuck you up. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm, he, he's that. You know what? I'm exactly. Let's wait till Saturday. Let's wait till Saturday. We'll let's see. But again, I'm, I'm talking about it. It's, it's, it's a real <laughs> thing, though. These are guys, in my opinion, that those there's too much talent in that weight class to be talking so spicy. You can't be out here talking like you that dude when there's too many, there's all these sharks in your weight class. Fuck Worry about that. Here. Worry about Worry. that. I, I'm, I'm saying, I, 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 I'm, I got no time for that, bro. Like, do, do I have him in my top 10 pound for pound? Because if we beat, yes, you have to put him there. He's in my top 10 pound for pound. Is he fight of the year? No, man. I would give that, granted, boxing, I honestly didn't want to give to anybody, to be honest with you. I, I really didn't want to give to anybody. It's one of those things that you fought one time. Like, who's the most... So, if they're fighting one time, who's the most impressive in their performances, right? Because that's what I got to think of. And that's why, TFMO, you weren't the most impressive to me. Hmm. Who's the most impressive in those performances? Well, if you're talking about people who impress you, Tyson Fury impressed me more than anybody else. He changed his style and destroyed the destroyer do you know what i'm saying that that that's impressive jamal charlo going out there and doing what he did and fighting that gritty performance of devrinchenko is more impressive to me than what teofimo lopez did because if you go back and watch that fight again what really did he do that was so impressive he beat Lomachenko, and while Again, they're, they're, because while they're, of Lomachenko not getting off, not taking anything I, away from him, not take he won that fight and he looked amazing. And I don't want to say that, but I'm saying if you really go back and look at it, if we're talking about did he blow you away in that one, or was it like I am so impressed that Lomachenko isn't doing Lomachenko shit, bro? I, I struggle with this. Like I struggle with this in my pick. I, I really did. And when you only have one fight over the course of the year to look at. It's going to be very difficult to weigh some of these things because you can only look at one performance. You don't have one, more than one performance to pick from. However, the reason I picked him was just, just the level of competition that he beat. You. you both started. Fucking Canelo Alvarez. Canelo Alvarez was more impressive in the performance. And, and, and against I'll, a dog, against somebody will, who's a legitimate badass. I will take I will take Canelo. I'll take Tyson, Tyson Fury. Jamal Charlo, eh, not so much. But I do hear the, the impression. Like the impression they left exactly. with them, how exactly. how big is that gap between them and their competition? However, at the reason I went at the end of the day, and Sergio, I think you have a valid valid point, and I, there should be a, an argument for your point all day. The reason yeah. Brandon, I'm not, saying, I'm, not saying yours, yours, yeah. I'm not saying yours is a bad point either. I'm not saying that at all. You know, it's, it's just a like great point. You know, it's a lot just of people, opinions. a lot of people didn't even have Deontay Wilder on the pound for pound list, whereas Vasily Lomachenko was crazy by let's say. 40% of boxing fans, 30 to 40% of boxing fans, the unquestioned pound for pound king. And that the only people is us, we, we, ha- we, you and I have, have had Canelo as our pound for pound number one for a long time. I think you and I have had him on our pound for pound number one for at least a year and a half. But we both, when we both started doing this, we both did also have Loma as our number one. Yeah. It was just because of his last few performances. And that's why I'm not as impressed. We, we were noticing, I'm not saying it's a decline, but those the bigger guys, Luke Campbell's of the world, dude, Loma wasn't blowing my hair back. So if we look at Loma's last three fucking performances, come on, fam. We No, no, no. I'm not going for that. He, we didn't say that going into the fight, though. We didn't. We didn't. But again, the hindsight being 2020, we can make that argument now, especially after Fair. seeing the fight. I can make that argument. You know what I'm saying? Fair. So, mm-hmm. because it, remember, it's a, it's a good debate. It's a, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, let's move on because um, and, and so I'm I'm going. Got to pick a guy. I would love to pick Canelo. I, I want to pick him. You know what? I'm going with Canelo. Canelo is my fighter it. of the year, and the reason Canelo is my fighter of the year is because or the interest. Uh, be, be, what was that? The interest the alone, <laughs> dog. You doing the mariachi? The final countdown was badass, fam. That you, mother, you know how much I traditionally hated that shit was Canelo hard. <laughs> You know how much I traditionally hated Canelo entrances. So I was just so happy that it wasn't that. That was hard. (laughs) That shit was hard, yo. I was sitting there with my headphones on on the couch like, oh, shit, okay, you hitting that. Loved it. (laughs) Um, But he, look, he went out there and dominated 
not just somebody who is a champion, somebody who cleaned out his own weight class. He had somebody who damn near cleaned out a weight class, and he goes out there and just casually whoops his ass. Canelo is my fighter of the year. I think I would say easy on the cleaning out the weight e- class. E- easy, 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 he, easy. He, he, he was, dude. Caleb Smith. People who talk shit is a. I, I hate them. I hate them talking shit about Caleb Smith because it, 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 it's all came after the fight. Like Caleb Smith wasn't a legitimate was a fight scrub. opponent. We didn't have. We didn't get to break that down, so we'll, we'll we won't stay here. But he he definitely didn't clean out the division, but he was more more dominating fool. It, it was the, the best fools. available opponent for Canelo. Easily, and, and 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 he walked through him, and that's why I look at that. Canelo Alvarez, people were picking Canelo to lose this fight. People were saying, I don't know if that reach advantage and everything going into it is going to be too much. Exactly. Uh, Both of us said that. And when we go out there and see what he did, to me, his, because here's the thing, he went out there and completely dominated. Fucking uh, Teofimo disappeared in the middle of the fight. We wanted, people want to dismiss that. He disappeared in the middle of the fight. Go back and watch the fight. I have. You know what I'm saying? And that's it is what it is. But let's move on to the next one. Uh, Aldrick, <laughs> brother, do you have any c- uh, comments on boxing's fighter of the year? Uh, I, I like both of you guys' point for me because I, I am a boxing casual. Let y'all know this. For me, I, I fight of the year who I was impressed with was the return of Errol Spence Jr. Yeah. I, I, he, I, he, I was impressed with his return. At all. Machine. I was a, I, I was I was impressed by his performance, especially after the accident he has. I was impressed to see how he came back. Dude, Errol Spence made Danny Garcia look like a warm-up fight. Ain't that a bitch? You, nobody <laughs> makes Danny Garcia look like a warm-up fight. He did. He was just like, oh, yeah, I'll take Danny Garcia. Light work. And just workman-like, machine-like, precision-like whooped his ass to the point that Danny's daddy was talking wild Sorry. shit to Danny. He saw wild shit. You weren't doing what you're supposed to do. Danny's like, you weren't getting hit by the motherfucker. <laughs> like you can see Danny wanting to say it in the post rest with you. Like Brandon, am I wrong? Nigga, have you, you taken a jab from EJ? <laughs> like, dude, he, he was looking at his pops that way. Like, bro, d- d- you were, and you, he just kept. He was like throwing his hands up. Like, you don't understand. <laughs> like, I was trying to, and EJ was just working my ass, hey, dude. That, dude, and, and look, that there's another one that. It, that performance was more impressive to me than Teofimo. That that was a workmanlike performance. And you dominated a guy who wasn't supposed to be dominated. Teofimo didn't dominate nobody. It's just because all of us held fucking Lomachenko this high. But right, let's think don't. about it. But let's think about this shit. If Lomachenko, we, again, look at his last couple fights. Should he have been high if we were, as we were holding him? Let's just keep it a fucking bean. All right, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the next one because uh, there's still so much to get to. I want to make this one quick. Uh, we're going to just spend a minute or so each on this one. Gentlemen, MMA and boxing, Audrey, we'll start with you. Who is your trainer slash team of the year? Trainer slash team of the year. If I had to say who had a great year this year, um, I might have to go with um, my boy Eric Nixick from Stream Couture. Um, very, very, he did have a good year. Um, he, he definitely is one of those coaches, like no one really, he goes under the radar, but you know, it's a guy who coaches Francis and Ganu has worked the likes of, um, Gustavo Lopez and all these guys. So that's got to look out for honorable mention for me. I'm going to have to go with Eugene Berryman for city kickboxing. Of course, got to show him some love. Berryman. Yeah. Eugene Berryman at city kickboxing. It is for me, man. What that team is done, even though. Dan Hooker didn't get a win. He has a, a fight of the year candidate out there. You know what I'm saying? Um, what they've done, I, I think that team is incredible. Uh, I think Eugene Behrman is, is is one of those Yoda guys. You know what I'm saying? So I, I give I fuck with him. Uh, Brandon, what you got for uh, for boxing, man? Who is your trainer of the year? There's only one trainer in boxing that has multiple unified champions, and that is Derek James. He bought Errol Spence, um, Aldrich's fighter of the year, bought him all the way back from what he experienced last year when he was thrown out of the Ferrari. And also he has Jermel Charlo, the 154 pound unified champion. One trainer, all of boxing with two unified champions. My trainer of the year, Derek James. Yeah, Uh, my my honorable mention would be Eddie Hironoso would be my honorable mention for boxing. Yeah, he has. Um, we haven't seen uh, Ryan perform yet, but from what we have seen from him, the development that he's had, and obviously even Canelo Alvarez is still developing, guys. 
that's the crazy thing about it. He's still developing. But let's take that's a look scary. outside outside of Canelo. He has Oscar Valdez. Um, nice. and there's also also a smaller guy, uh something Martinez Ray. Oh, what's his name? I know you're talking about. He's a little monster too. Dude, that yeah. team in, in San Diego, it, man, boxing needs to watch out. They're and now Eddie's also managing most of them too. Dog, they're 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 doing something special over there. All right, uh, Aldrich, this one's specifically to you, my friend, my <laughs> jujitsu ace, bro. <laughs> who, in your opinion, was this year's submission of the year? Submission of the year has to go to. Uh, I looked at all the submissions. Jack Hermanson heel hook Kevin uh, ooh, against Kevin Gastelum. Ooh, that was a good one. <laughs> oh man, you know what? I'm going go. What's your reason? <laughs> I, I'll give you mine. The reason why uh, I don't know if you guys follow jujitsu a lot. The toughest submission in the world to even possibly get in the world of MMA is a leg submission. Yeah. So the fact he was able to get a heel hook on Kelvin Gastelum, because in MMA, when you get up for a, a leg submission, you're putting yourself in harm's way to get pretty much punched, punched down on, bring down in on. the face. So the fact that he was able to land that and he solidified it, I got to give it to him. I'm going with the young gunner over in Bellator, goes out there and throws a submission I've never seen. I'm just going to call it the Makia team. I'm going with AJ <laughs> motherfucking McKee going out there and not only submitting Darian Caldwell, who is a dog, a multiple time champion. He is someone who is a black belt himself on the fucking ground. And he goes out there, uh, AJ McKee, and throws up a submission I have never fucking seen. It was some Same fucked here. up guillotine, neck crank, the fiasco. Bro, 1,000% AJ motherfucking McKee. I ain't mad at you. I'm not mad at you at all, man. That, that, that was that's a good that's a good pick right there. I was going there. I, I was going there as well. I had never seen anything like that <laughs> shit. I, no I, shit I, like I think that. I watched the whole video breakdown on the submission because I just didn't know what was going on. Easy. Yeah. For, honestly, my pick would have been if he had got this submission would have been Charles Oliver against Tony Ferguson, but. He survived the round. That would be my submission, but it didn't go through. If, if, <laughs> if he was able to get that submission, because here's the thing. If he got it, he would have snapped his arm. Now, here's the thing. Ten more mm. seconds, he would have got it. Ten yeah. more seconds, that arm would have been a, a, a nice... Ah! That's what we would have seen. I was standing on my couch screaming at the top of my lungs <laughs> <laughs> in my pillow. My girl ran to the room like, what's wrong? I'm on the couch with a pillow in my face. Ah! Bro, it was... I, I literally thought that dude's arm. I was about to watch somebody's arm snap in half. Um, I don't know if you guys. I, I the story I have is I watched one of the best submissions ever was Frank Mir, Big Nogueira. Okay, you have Frank Mir who is known known as one of the the, the most lethal submission artists in heavyweight history against the fucking legend black belt fucking Nogueira. Right? They hit the ground. My man grabs a locks in a Kimura in the watching two 250 plus pound men transition the way they did. They were literally rolling over and flipping another one. And then out of nowhere, he locks it down. And when I say so, for those who do not know, he grabs it, essentially grabs his arm at a 90 degree angle, pulls it behind his own back. And is able to leverage himself to snap your shoulder and oh, your no. arm with that one move. He did that. And we're talking about a 250 pound, no, he was 260 at that time, was able to posture up and do that to another man. I saw that live. I was at Buffalo Wild Wings. It was packed. You will never hear a crowd of people go, oh, at the same time. It was nuts. Nasty submission I've ever seen. That was worse than when I watched. Um, <coughs> Anderson snap up his leg. I saw that like. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. Let, let, let's 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 transition, gentlemen. I love that one. Um, because he still got a bunch to get to. Gentlemen, both of you, we're we'll start with boxing. B fight of the year. Fight of the year it was relatively easy. Um so going easy. to go it was with a uh, five round war. Yeah. Uh, Jose Cepeda, Ivan Baranchek. Um, what eight? Eight knockdowns, uh, ninth knockdown, nine knockdowns. If you consider the knockout a knockdown, uh, he sparked him in the fifth round. 
completely not knocked him out. I mean, there really isn't anywhere else you can go in boxing. There was no other fight that I've seen in years that gave you that type of entertainment value in just five rounds. So you're talking about an all out war. The only thing, if you can make an argument, the stakes weren't as high, but these were still two top 10 fighters. Absolutely. Jose Cepeda and Ivan Branchax uh, with Jose Cepeda knocking him out cold in the fifth cold. round. Cold. And dude, here's the thing. Cepeda is a counter, but he's a smooth boxer, not known for laying people down. Dude, he sent that man to hell. It was mm -hmm. crazy. Straight up to the shadow realm, he hit that dude in. That dude was fucking astro projecting all the way through. It was one of the nastiest knockouts I've ever seen. Then he got knocked down four times him damn self. Crazy fight. Absolutely the fight of the year. Honestly, one of the best fights I've ever fucking seen. Uh, Aldrich, bro, MMA, what you got? Because here's the thing. In MMA, for people who do not know, there were actually options. Unlike boxing, we had options. We had um, we're starting off with the women. Uh, we had a Wei Lei Zhang and, um, and Joanna Yanjaychuk. Amazing fight. We had Dan Hooker and Dustin Poirier putting on a fucking show. We had Davidson Figueredo putting on a show against a uh, little Mexican kid last weekend. Couple Brandon weeks ago, Moreno. Brandon Moreno. We had, um, oh, I'm missing one. I'm missing one. I'm, oh, fight of the, I don't care how the, it worked out. Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje was an amazing fight. There were some amazing fights in MMA this year. Aldrich, with all those fights, and I, I know I've missed a couple, bro. Who, oh, 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 how can I'm sorry, Shane Burgos. I can, I'll be remiss if I talk about that. <laughs> Fucking Shane Burgos versus, um, oh, uh, fuck. Uh, Josh man, Emmett. Really, Josh Emmett, holy shit. That fight too. So many amazing fights this year. Aldrich, what was your fight of the year? Uh, this one was by far the toughest year for fight of the year candidates. Usually it's so easy to pick one between one and two. We had all those options. And to narrow it down, so many options. So many options. I'm I'm going to have to go with the straw weights, Joanna Jerjacek and Weili Zhang. Man, and of course, we don't war. usually do the whole gin thing, but, but a war between these two women. Joanna, who's decorated as one of the best strikers in that straw weight division. I had Joanna winning. And most people had Joanna winning. Most oh, no, people I, had Joanna winning. I, I, I had Jane because after I saw you have a crush on her. That's why. Don't let's not let's not get it twisted. I know what this maybe is. Part, maybe know partially. This is. <laughs> my, my main reason was is how she my, <laughs> my reason main reason was I chose her in that fight because how she ran through Jessica Andros like it was no tomorrow. Like she ran through her. And then the way she persevered through Joanna, like the way she just like you saw, Joanna was picking up the pace, and she came with a second win and said, "No, no, no, no. I'm gonna show you why I'm the champion." Her ass in the fifth round, Joanna, and, and that was one oh of those no. That I just was scared. Brother, that what do you mean? You, we don't. We don't know. We, I, I was got, scared. We got numbers. We have <laughs> legitimate we not... numbers. That it was the damage anything. for me that he that told me. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. So, so here's the thing. I'm gonna say it like this. That was also <laughs> my fight of the year. Okay. Gentlemen, mm. y'all need to take a step back, take a seat, because the women showed the fuck out this year, okay? They showed out. They went out there and just balled out, and that fight had everything, everything. It had the blood and guts that you want. It had the, the technique. It had the hard shots. It had the drama. And here's the thing. They didn't clinch. There was barely any clinching. That shit didn't go on the ground. It was just fisticuffs. All motherfuckers. It really was. What a great fight, those women. And here's the thing. I did have Yoana winning. And the reason I had Yoana winning is this. One, she outstruck her. Plain and simple. She outstruck her. And when you, if we're looking at the waves, you, Wei Li Zhang had to come back to try to win that fight. And she still got outstruck in that last round. I truly believe... If Joanna didn't look like a fucking Klingon in that last round, people would have given her that fight. Um, but we have to remember, what does Joanna look like after all of her fights? Dog, her, she has hella scar tissue. She's one of those women we forget the years of Muay Thai that she's done. Fucking badass. I, I love her. She she should be the champion. Any other woman that night would have lost, but Wei Li Zhang is also a monster. And to be honest with you guys... For business wise, it's probably best that Whaley Zhang won if we're trying to get into that market. So I get it. 
I get it. I get it. I get it. Um, B, any comments or questions on that one? Dog, she was looking like Goonies. <laughs> Yo, one thousand. Nah, Mega Mind. She was looking like no, Mega Mind. All of them. She was looking rough. It was one of the worst. It was one of the worst team of Tomas I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot of the motherfuckers. And real and quick, Shorty was just clapping was that shit. Us, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was gonna explode. Like you talk about how nasty Nuts. it was when uh Buddy almost got his arms snapped a couple weeks ago. I was like, bro, he that shit is about to fucking Matt talking about that was not no scar tissue. <laughs> nah, that shit was rough. <laughs> <laughs> Dog, it was rough. It was. I'll tell you one thing. It it was really rough to look at, and um, and, and it's one of those things that uh, put in charge my goddamn computer, gentlemen. The last thing we want to do is I'm in the middle of recording. I'm the one recording. My computer dies. <laughs> oh um, yeah, that, that would be terrible. Yeah, so that not. Been there. I, I just thought it was gonna snap. I was like, and then they showed the slow mo replays when she was hitting. I was like, bro, this is graphic. It it was like get a woman fighting and stuff. Yeah. It was yeah. jiggling this shit. <laughs> but look, she had a fat in her forehead. Man, it was, but that was the fight of the year. Hands down, no questions asked, mm-hmm. fight of the year. Um, one thing that I didn't put on here and I want to talk to you guys about, gentlemen, boxing wise and MMA, what was your robbery of the year? Because we have that. to have this one. Gentlemen, robbery of the year. What we where are we at? Uh Brandon, let's start with you. Robbery of the year. You're probably looking for a decision. A boxing decision that didn't go the right way. I'm gonna go in the area. It was a decision, but not on the scorecards. I will go Andrew Maloney against Joshua Franco two that ended in a no contest. That was some look scoring and combat. That was bad. Scoring, that was bad. Scoring and combat sports is subjective, and that's how it works. And that's why it's so debated amongst the. That's why we have these bad decisions. Who do you think won? But it's subjective. You can watch around. I can see one thing. You could see another round. I score side A. You score side B. That causes all types of issues. It's not often that we get to go to replay, watch the replay, and say, yes, this did happen, or no, this did not happen. And so what happened in that fight, that's a rematch of a fight which Andrew Maloney lost earlier that year. He came back. Super so ready bad. for the rematch. Super ready to get his WBA title back. He was dominating. Was the fight. Working him, working saw, him, working him. We saw the we saw the jab that that put that uh, opened the cut above his eye. And when they stopped the fight, they said this came from a headbutt. Now the Nevada State Athletic Commission recently instated a rule where they said they could go to replay, just like the NFL, throw the red flag. Okay, cool. They go to replay. They spend thirty minutes there. And still say this came from a headbutt, but they can't show us the headbutt where it came from. Dog. It was a wow. terrible, terrible decision. That was of the, some of the worst shit I have seen in boxing. Seen. And ever what are we going to do? Bob Aaron said we're going to get the fuck out of Vegas. We are going to get the fuck out of Nevada. That's what hey. he said. And I mean, I can't blame the guy. They went to instant replay. We're not talking about a bad decision. Instant replay. And they got it wrong. That is the robbery. It was robbery. Robber. It, it really was. It was. T- that was... That was one of the worst, things, especially with the replay and the fact that, I mean, you stole a win from this man. He was got, beating that man's ass. That was pretty fucking bad. Uh, I got an honor, honorable, honorable mention. Yeah, please. Fucking Roly should not have a belt. Any type of belt. Roly any, any bad belt. No Roly don't deserve that world. shit. He don't deserve that shit at all. <laughs> Jack, Jackson Martinez, give that man his belt. Simple. Please. He deserves it. He deserves it. He beat it. the shit out of that man. Man. Aldrich, bro, what we got? What's MMA's robbery of the year? Sir, you should know this one by now. Max Holloway, Volkanovski, too. Hands down, robbery of the year. That was some other bullshit. I watched that fight multiple times. Max Dog. outstruck this man in the first three rounds and knocked him Dog. down twice. Three times. <laughs> twice. Bob, Bob three in his times. ass. Three times. He knocks this man down. Just he's dragging him. And here's the thing. Still outstruck him in the fifth round. Literally lands more strikes in the fifth round. This the, the 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 champion, air quotes, lands more strikes in the fourth, and they give him the fight. What the fuck? Here's one oh. thing I will give box. Here's one thing I'll give boxing compared to MMA. Even though judges be bad when it comes to boxing, at least they could get it right in the score wise. MMA. 
then you work on scoring a little bit more. Cause you telling me that a takedown nah, without I'm, you I'm doing no like, damage. Oh, I hear what you're saying. I, I hear what you're saying. If you're saying say, if you're telling me that a takedown where you're not doing anything at all, just sitting there is more than a knockdown. Me knocking your ass down, which is in some sports in boxing, too, I'm not mistaken, is that's an automatic 10 8, right? If you get like yeah, right. knockdowns. Yep. Yep. I feel I think I, I, I believe MMA should adapt that. I think they do, but knockdown, three knockdowns in a fight, which is stupid. That's worth more than just a regular takedown that you do anything. Exactly. That was robbery of the year for me. Honorable mention, Paul mm-hmm. Paul Felder, Dan Hooker. Dan Hooker, yes. That that is absolutely honorable mention. Mm-hmm. He he got robbed, but I, I can make a case. I can see people making a case for uh for for Dan Hooker to win. There is no case for Alexander Volkanovsky. He did not win that fight. You got your ass whooped. And here's the thing: the first one, we can make a case. That fight was not close. So the real championship fight at 145 pounds is Max Holloway versus Calvin Cater. That's going to be your championship fight because that's the actual champ of that weight class. I don't give a fuck what anybody yep. says. And here's the thing. I'm glad that Max Holloway finally went out there and has said something about that shit. He's finally spoken about it, and he was like, I got robbed. This is bullshit. Everybody knows. He said, I, he said, I talked to... Jorge Masvidal, I talked to Kobe Covington, I talked to DC, I talked to all these individuals. Go go ahead, I'm sorry. What's up? Our stats guy, Matt Fox, has let me has let me know that MMA changed the rule to make it easier for a 10-8 round, but they barely but they still barely they don't, give out. They don't attack. address it. They don't. Wow. Ever. So but they if they did follow follow the rule as they're supposed to, and I guess I don't know if this was before or after the Holloway fight, but if they did follow the rule as they were supposed to, it would have changed the outcome of that fight. Yeah, yo, a- absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If they did what they were supposed to do, because that first round should have absolutely been a 10-8 round. If they had a 10-8 round, because he he dropped him twice in the first round. So if that, that right there, the he, and then he drops him again in the second round. Dude, he won the fight. There, It's like, it, they, it should have been, it's one of those like, it's the same way when um, when they gave Robert Whitaker the fight over uh, Yoel Romero. Yoel Romero in the fifth round dropped Robert Whitaker. it was two or three times in the fifth. Fam, we see who's winning. This is like this is plain as day. This dude is coming downhill, whooping this guy's ass. How can you give it to the other guy? Another fight that was like that said, I think was honorable mention, is uh, John Jones beating um, uh, fuck boy. Um, what was his name? Reyes. Reyes. Dominic. Yes. Dominic Reyes. John Jones lost that fight. That's another one. But n- there was no robbery bigger than Max Holloway. <laughs> And, where, where are you? Where are you on the boxing side? I'm with you on the same one. That, that was I'm on the same. I had the same one as you did. That's why I, I had nothing else to 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 add to that because <laughs> I was like, hey, I, I'm with you on that one. She um, instant replay. Come on now, dog. Fucked it all up. Um, gentlemen, let, let's. I appreciate your guys' time so much. Everyone who's been watching us live today on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, thank you guys so much for joining us. A little end of the year match uh, to show, and not only end of the year show on the last day of the year. Y'all have seen me this year go from like a, a little curly fade to to the whole pullback joint. We out here, we doing thing. Brandon, I appreciate you every step of the way, man. Aldrich, thank you for joining us this year. Also, but we're not done on the show today. So uh, <laughs> let's go up there also. And um, one thing we want to discuss, uh, we have a couple fights. Um, this past, uh, this, we have uh, Ryan Garcia competes this weekend. Uh, dude, great fight. Luke Campbell, Ryan Garcia, Luke Campbell, gold medalist. Um, from that one of that, that, that darling, you know, British class that came out there um, with all the gold medals and shit. Uh, he does have three losses on his record, but they're to dogs. You know what I'm saying? There's no shame in his game. Uh, two of them are dogs. Two of them are dogs. The first one was whatever. Um, but the dude is legitimate. Um, this is a legit step up fight for Ryan Garcia. If he wins this fight, this isn't just a step up. You're at title level. If you can beat Luke Campbell, you're at title level. Okay. Um, especially if you can do it in a dominant fashion. This is a big fight for boxing in general. And uh, if Ryan Garcia can win, we can legitimately see a Ryan Garcia Tank Davis fight. I think quicker than a lot of people expected. Um, you, what do you think? How? What do you? What do you? What do you? Is your expectations for this matchup? Bruh, this is a very, very difficult pick for me, and I go back and forth on it. For a long time, I probably had Luke Campbell by decision picked. I think that Ryan Garcia has benefited from some not so great opposition who are just going to charge in at him, allowing him yeah. to use his counter left hook. 
I think that Luke Campbell, an Olympian in his own right, I think a gold medalist at that. And that's something that you cannot just turn your nose at in boxing. He is a, the man is a gold medalist. That means he is very, very, very skilled inside the squared circle. I think he can stay on the outside and, and, and really jab Garcia to a, a wide points decision, or at least like, you know, a, a six to, I'm sorry, a, a eight to four type of performance. Legitimate. But man, I believe in Eddie Reynoso. I don't think Eddie Reynoso is just going to serve his boy up to the, to the lines like that if he isn't absolutely sure that he's ready. And I believe, and, and when I see the game plan that he just put together to get inside someone to, to get inside the reach of someone who's longer than him. And Ryan Garcia is not like, he's not at a reach deficit here. It's probably pretty similar. He's very long and lanky himself. So he has good reach himself. I, I, I'm going to go with Eddie Reynoso. I trust in Eddie Reynoso. He's one of the best trainers in boxing. Ryan Garcia has undergone a complete transformation since, since he's been with him. And Ryan Garcia has a pretty lengthy and successful amateur career himself. Very All of those factors angry. allow yes. me to go with Ryan Garcia by knockout in the eighth round. I I echo that. Yes. Yep. Same. I'm with you. 100%. But this is a, a very close fight. No, no upsets yeah. either way. No, no upsets either way, but um, I'm with you. I believe in Aiden uh, Reynoso. I believe in uh, Ryan Garcia also. I, I, I think Ryan's a legitimate badass. I, I think um, the moves that he has made, I think him going to Eddie Reynoso says a lot. And now he is truly, you see him in there training with Canelo day in and day out. They were in the same training camp together. They work together. They spar together. To me, that means a lot. That the, Getting those rounds in, that is literally iron sharpening iron. Um, I, I am a believer in Ryan Garcia. And even physically, I mean, he looked like he'd been in the gym. He, he looked like he's starting to, he feel, he's filling out a little bit, man. Um, you can t- He's big for the weight class, as is Campbell. I, I mean, dude, I put it like this. If Ryan Garcia fights tomorrow, if he has to fight Tank Davis, Tank Davis is getting his head knocked off. I mean, I'm Ryan Garcia. I think he's I think I think he's too fast and I think he's too long for for dude. He's going to light that boy on fire and be yeah, the it's... biggest star in boxing. He's already one of the biggest stars in stars in boxing. To be saying. quite he, honest, he, but and, he but if he goes out there and beats Tank Davis and like dust oh, them, oh Tank, the big biggest star in boxing. Oh, absolutely. But I don't know if they're going to make that fight because you know how PBC fighters get down. But however, Ryan Garcia seems to be ready. He wants to make those big fights happen. But that fight against Tank does it happen? Maybe at one forty. I don't think it happens at one thirty or one thirty five. Sorry, you. spoil your spoil your day. Well, Look, well, gentlemen, look, we've had a lot of great fights and everything this year. It's been a great year for combat sports. I think, if anything, won this year is absolute combat sports. Gentlemen, I appreciate both of you guys coming on. Um, what are you guys to close out? What are we looking forward to uh, fight-wise in the world of combat sports in 2021? And then also, before we get out of here, got to get your guys a uh, pick for uh, album of the year, hip-hop-wise. Whoever want to go. I'll be, go, go ahead, Ree. I'm looking forward to a 2021 that will host Anthony Joshua versus Tyson Fury. That is one of the biggest fights in boxing. We know the heavyweights are the glamour div- division, and they are working towards making it happen. I, I'm surprised the fight hasn't been made yet, but I'm, I'm sure they're trying to work out some things in terms of Corona, where we're going to be, how many people they can have in the crowd, because that's definitely a fight where they're going to want to recoup those funds for the uh, live gate. So that's something in combat sports to look forward to in 2021. Um, as far as my album of the year, Serge, come on now. You know where we are going. Our boy, Freddie Gibbs, RIP to the Gibbs gang Instagram. We are no longer. Oh, uh, man, the most entertaining Instagram out. Aside from right. the fight podcast. Uh, <laughs> all right. All right. <laughs> um, but yeah, my boy, Freddie Gibbs, definitely my favorite rapper for the past few years with uh, Alfredo, the Grammy nominated. Alfredo. Grammy nominated Alfredo. Loved it. Uh, I, I, that's what it is. Uh, Aldrich, bro, what you got? So fight of the year as far as, well, I grew with B and you guys as far as boxing, MMA. So MMA got like three fights I'm looking forward to this year. I'm definitely looking forward to um, Holloway Cater. Yeah. I'm looking forward to Adesanya going with the challenge Jan Blahovich for this uh, light heavyweight title. Oh, do you mean whoop Jan's ass? He gonna fuck Jan up. I'm just like, look, and I, and I think Jan is very good. 
Yo, he's 38 years old when he's going into that damn fight. <laughs> and he's not going to do... C- come on, son. He's going to get that chip. I can't wait to gloat. And I can't wait to see who John Jones faces between the winner of Steve Pay and Francis Ngannou for the heavyweight title. I love it. I love it. I love that one. Um, I, I agree with you also with the John jo- I can't wait to see who John Jones faces in terms of Stipe and Francis. I think that would be amazing. Um, I, can- I, I, I agree also. I cannot wait to see um, Adesanya and, um, and, uh, and Jan. I can't wait to see him get that belt. But I also, two more fights. I cannot wait to see Jorge Masvidal fight Colby Covington. That's going to be an entertaining matchup. The Battle of the Magas. I can't wait to see that. <laughs> uh, we're going to see how that fight works out. And then after that, the other one is, I can't wait to see at the end of the year, close out the biggest pay-per-view of the year, John Jones, Israel Adesanya, to close it out. That's how I want the year to end. That's what I want to see. And I cannot wait to see Adesanya be the first one to give John Jones his real first L. He will knock that fool's head off. Watch. <laughs> And for my album of the year, um, album of the year, I listen to a lot of good albums this year. You guys probably gonna laugh at me for my pick. No, brother, I listen to all kinds of shit. I would have to say, "Blame It on Baby" was my album of the year by the Baby. That's a good album. pick. That's a good album. <laughs> yeah, you see, look, you Blame know, we about to come at your head. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, now, I'll mention I gotta give Pop Smoke's final album too. Gotta give Show Look Pop, Pop Smoke had a good album. Come on now, album. come on album. now. <laughs> but look, so Pop Smoke for me had a great album this year. Um, Royce the Five Nine, love Royce. He had a great year. He had a great album. Um, fucking Russ had a good ass year. Russ had oh a good gosh. year this year. Russ was killing that little mixtape project at the end of the year. Nick, that shit was. Fire! Yeah, he, I didn't he know has he like bars. That. That's what I'm saying. He has bars. Russ had a great year. Our boy Benny the Butcher. Come on, man. Get Benny. Had I mean Griselda had a great year. Okay, Griselda went out there and just crushed it this year. And come on, we got we got his, my album of the year. We got to close the show with none other than Mr. Alfredo from Gary, Indiana. Mr. Freddy motherfucking Gibbs, the rabbit himself. Man, Alfredo was my my album of the year. I listened to it still consistently my most Bronson most... also had a good project really a Who great knows? project actually uh um was only for dolphins really uh the alchemist did the whole, whole project mm. it's fire project super fire stove guy uh, like... one too that was fire i gotta show love to like it's, it's an ep it was eb project um uh, masego uh study abroad masego had a great project too i love masego's project yeah i'm a big fan of buddy Oh, okay. I'm I'm more of a R&B guy, low key. I be in this mug singing my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't the only one. <laughs> oh, man, I be out here. Y'all love that shit. That shit. Masego had a great project. Um, no, there was some good. There was some good, good music this year, man. But uh, for hip hop wise, and 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 what I, that that was mine. Uh, R, if I go R and B, Tiana Taylor had a great album this year. Um, what's this? A, a Victoria, um, some shit. Her, her album is called Jaguar. That was the shit. Oh, uh, Xavier Omar. Xavier if you Omar, feel. great album this year. That was another one. Fire, fire album. In Still fact, uh, for for the first of the year, man, we got a. Uh, you know what? Tonight I'll drop one. I'm gonna drop a, a one of our fight podcast mixtapes, man. We'll do uh, the our best hits of the year. So keep your eyes and ears open for that, man. I, I, I'll you know, drop it on. Uh, on you IG. know, I love uh, I love me some Spilligion, and um, Spilligion was fire this year too. And if you if you're from New York, you know all of us are waiting on that Uncle Murder 2020 wrap up. I know that's some New York shit. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting on that boy. I was, I was These are hilarious. <laughs> They're great. And, they and, are great. And, and ASAP Rocky won the year. Don't care to know what I says. Yeah, yeah. I, I got, I got, I got, I got beef for him. I got beef for him. No, no, he won. He, he, he won. He won. He, 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 won. he stole my woman. He stole my woman. You had no, no chance. <laughs> <laughs> he had no chance. I can't TV see your face on your stream. You have no chance. ASAP, hey, ASAP, and Rihanna are out here like on shrooms in Barbados, just living their lives right now. But they're having the greatest time. ASAP, you know what I'm when he won the year, that is 2020. Who won? Not us, nigga. It was Joe Biden. No, actually, no. America, we won. We got rid of Trump. Okay, like that. That's a win for us. Georgia, okay, uh, we got. I Georgia. know y'all know y'all give no fuck about uh coronavirus. You know, well, I, I, I know party's, fuck about the party's going on tonight. But boy, 
Y'all went blue. Shout yes. out to you. Well, no, we need y'all to also go out there and still vote in a couple of days. So, Georgia, yeah. go out there and vote. We need to flip the Senate. That evil turtle is going... I can't have him out here making legislation and blocking shit. This man... He, he, say, he says all of you in this country, after a year of what you've been through, only deserve $600. All of you. That's it. And that's too much. I shouldn't even give you that. you lucky. You're buying coche. That's what that motherfucker said. Okay? Let's get rid of this fuck, man. Come on, Georgia. Let's do what you got to do. California, we did our thing. D.C. did their fucking thing. Illinois gang, did gang. their fucking thing. Come on. So New York did their fucking thing. Pennsylvania did their fucking thing. Now y'all go out there and do your fucking thing. Exactly. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. <laughs> that being said, man, um, that is about all the time we have. This is our 2020 wrap-up show, our fight round table. I've been joined by Aldrich from the Fight Dialogue. Check out this man's amazing page. They're fucking killing it. 100,000 plus motherfucking downloads on YouTube. We see you, nigga. That's what the fuck it is. And then on the other Appreciate side, guys. we have my man's B Cam the Guru. Always a pleasure. Um, gentlemen, uh, the floor is yours before we get out here. Aldrich, bro, it's all you. Your, your time to close it up. Oh, man. Thank you guys uh, just for having me on here. Um, I love what you guys are doing as well here, too. I pay attention. I watch it every time I tune in. Uh, met you guys this year, um, this crazy ass year. So I'm crazy definitely grateful for you year. guys. Looking forward to collabing more. And then hopefully, when everything dies down, we can see each other in person one day. No so, yeah. Shit. Heck yeah, man. I got to get some jujitsu in, bro. You got to teach me some shit. Me too. Me too. I got you. I got you. I'm trying to learn. I'm trying to get <laughs> I got down. you. I got you. I, I need, yeah, I need the beginner session. The beginner session. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I'll come before Surge. We can't be in the same session. Surge, one of them niggas be getting too aggressive during sparring. Like, all right, all right. You got to no, take it no, dude, Not me, man. I'm super too. I've been doing this for too long, bro. I'm super chill, bro. I've been thinking about I've been, I've been rolling jujitsu for, at this point in time, what, it's 2000? I started rolling. I've been rolling. I've been training jiu-jitsu for 15 years at this point in time. Like, I, like, yeah, I'm, I'm the guy you want to <laughs> roll with. I ain't do. I'm chill. <laughs> like, I, 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 I don't even. I don't even start standing when I do jiu-jitsu. I'm like, fuck that, nigga. Sit down. Let, let's just play. We play bump. All right, nigga. Let's go. Like, I, I am not. You ain't taking me down hard. I ain't playing that game. Nope. Mm-mm. But I will get you with this motherfucking arm triangle. Don't get it twisted. I will get you. I get you that arm triangle. Get your ass with that motherfucking darse. And if you put me on my back, I will triangle the fuck out of you. Yes, I'm. Back. <laughs> so, all right, you know, and I have great defense. I do turtle arms, my nigga. <laughs> <laughs> nope. I, I I I've been armbarred enough. I've already, I've heard my elbow. Go, boop, boop, boop. I've heard that before. Not fun. So when Tony, that's why I was jumping up and down when Tony was going through it because literally, it, Audrey knows exactly what I'm talking about. Brandon, when you're getting your arm, <laughs> kind of shit, literally all you hear is, and you be like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah, yes, no, nope, not 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 about that life. Here, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on if my I second. Can teach you anything still. about jujitsu? Keep your arms tight. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, am I lying? <laughs> <laughs> You're not. <laughs> Yo, I have been trying to get my lady to train jujitsu with me for years. And and she thinks that I'm going to like, she's like, what the fuck? No, you're you're huge. What the hell am I going to roll around with you? You're going to like, you're trying, she thinks I'm going to like try to dominate her. And I'm like, jujitsu is like the, the passive gentleman's game. Like, no, babe, I'm going to be like, she don't get it. It's the gentle art. You. Yeah, she you're like, you're like, trying to dominate. dominate. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> no, that, I'm, I'm trying to tell her. I'm like, look, dude, this is an opportunity to, you know, you can learn a little self defense. Anybody get it? Ah, throw a dude out the way. You know, what I'm saying, escape a little shrimping out. Like, I'm, I want, I want to teach her that. I, it would be fun. And you know how it is when you teach, you get an opportunity to really, like, really dust. That's how you get good in like jujitsu and stuff like that. I think when you're teaching and you're really working on those fundamentals, that's when you get good. So I want to dust them off. Yeah, man, she won't let me live, bro. That's fucked up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's fucked up Tosh Bueno no, no, it, it, it's all love man I appreciate it and you know uh, and, and I'm gonna say salute to Tosh Tosh also man she's uh, the first lady of the fight podcast so she's a producer on the show 
Um, she does all of our graphics on social media. If you guys haven't checked out the Fight Podcast page, I'm telling you, it, it looks right now amazing. And uh, that's because of her uh, creative and artistic design, man. So salute to uh, Natasha. Much love for what she does and everything she brings to the Fight Podcast. Um, Brandon, brother, the floor is yours, man. Thank you, as always, for the, uh, for, for you coming on, man. Another year together. Brandon and I also met each other, honestly, through this show. Um, and, uh, I was only doing it for about a year and some change at that point in time. You've literally been with me for the last two years, brother. I really do appreciate you, man, and everything that you bring to the table. And, um, and true, have truly, and it's funny, we've literally only met each other in person once. And this dude is literally one of my best friends in the world. Uh, so brother, salute to you, my friend. And, uh, the floor is yours. Man, Serge, I appreciate it. It's uh, definitely, it's, it's probably my first, I think I started with you the beginning of 2019. So 2020 was my first full year doing this. I look forward to doing it with you for many more years. And um, yeah, 2021 is our year. Again, we're going gonna, we gonna to level up, continue to level up. We, we both started the year in, in, in other cities. we in new cities. Uh, we're going to continue to get the crazy. money. crazy. We did start off in other fucking cities. I was yeah, in Chicago. <laughs> this nigga was in fucking Boston. I'm out here in LA, loving life. And now he's in Chocolate City, loving life. <laughs> loving life. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah. I mean, shout out, to, shout out to both of y'all. Shout out to having me here and being able to do this. I mean, you know, we don't get to go to the barbershop, I always say, and talk talk basketball and NFL. You know, this is the outlet for us to be able to connect with each other, to be able to be able to connect with our listeners. It's a fun, fun platform. And you know, we do we do it at what we can. We do this for y'all, we do this for us, and um, we're gonna continue mm. to to grow, uh, grow the page, grow the podcast, and uh grow as men in 2021. Absolutely, man. And and for, for myself, that. man, um I everyone who's been listening and tuned in. Um, over this last, honestly, this week will be my third year doing this. So, you know, I want to thank everybody for, for everything along this journey. We've really leveled up this year. I mean, before this year, we weren't, we're live streaming now on fucking different, you know, platforms where, where we have our YouTube page where, you know, we're really starting to take, take initiative and doing some different things. Um, this upcoming year we have to look forward to on the fight podcast is, we're going to have some amazing interviews. Um, one thing that I think a lot of people have seen is we're not just doing fights. Uh, we, we do a little bit of everything, man. You're going to, I'm going to have some great interviews. We have some, some senators that are actually going to be coming on the show, some, some legislators coming on the show. Um, we have some, some, some great boxers, some great trainers uh, that we already have lined up, man. Some, some people from the culture, comedians. Uh, a lot of a lot of fun. We're some, some artists. Uh, we're we're, we're going to do a lot with that, man. So um, keep your eyes and ears open for what we're doing here on the Fight Podcast. Uh, and uh, support, man. I love you guys. Love it all. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the show. What you guys have been doing. Aldrich, bro, you guys are fucking killing it. Appreciate you, man. Keep doing your fucking thing. B, you already know, bro. Um, for everybody else who has been on the show, I appreciate you guys. Um, our brother, Matt Fox. Uh, also, Matt Fox. My, my boy, our Matt Fox. I appreciate <laughs> you, man. Uh, Mystic, Mystic Black, bro. I appreciate you. Um, everyone who has been on the show this year, all of our athletes, all the guests, everybody who's come on. Thank you guys so much uh, for everything on 2020. 2021 is going to be fucking fire. And I'm not talking about California. So, uh, <laughs> 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 <Did it>. uh <laughs> yo, uh, appreciate you guys. Gentlemen, it is what it is. We'll get after it. And uh, we, we acting like this is going to be a far break. Probably see you niggas next week. Couple days. <laughs> uh, I, I, I definitely be talking, talking, well, sir. Talking I, to you. You know how difficult it is to talk to Sir during a fight? He'd be like, bro, every time during the fight, I FaceTime and started to cover me. Clubhouse, we'll be there. We will. Oh, we're doing club. We're starting Clubhouse this year. So we'll be on Clubhouse. So check us out there and um, other people's pages. We will not be named. <laughs> we ain't even fucking with their pages. Fuck those other pages. <laughs> Fuck what they do. Nigga, it's about us. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon knows what I'm talking about. Audrey in the middle, like I have no clue what they talk about. I don't know what's going on. I, I, it's I all know. good. Yeah, it's, 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 it's turn this into the shade room real quick. <laughs> <laughs> all right, much love. I'll see y'all next time. This is Serge Center, the host of the Greatest Combat Sports Coach Show on the Entire Universe Five Podcast. This is episode 254. Uh, 2020. Fuck you. Peace out. <laughs>